Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a horror film from Japan, Japanese language English subs, released in the year 2006, directed by Shinya Sakamoto, and this film is called Nightmare Detective. So Nightmare Detective is about a group of people who have been found dead in their beds, and basically the detective in lead in the investigation believes that it's just suicide. And so he, he believes case closed, but unfortunately they realise that every one of these suicide victims has actually called the same number just before they've died. So they dial the number and it leads them to a very mysterious man. And this man has the ability to actually get inside people's heads and especially inside people's dreams. And this is what's causing these people to kill themselves. And so the detective is horrified by this revelation. So he wants the services of a man who is very well known and actually getting inside people's dreams as well. And he is known as the Nightmare Detective detective and so this guy is very very troubled he's had a horrible upbringing and he's tried to kill himself he doesn't like the fact he can get inside people's heads because it's a terrifying experience so finally he agrees uh, to go into the minds of other people who these police believe are the next victims and so he has to try and stop this serial killer from picking off and making the body count rise but whether or not he can overcome his own demons in order to do this is something you're gonna have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis now my thoughts on Nightmare Detective. The best way I can sum this movie up is that it's a nightmare on Elm Street sort of Japanese version and that in itself is very disappointing based on the fact that Shinya Sakamoto has so much accolade as far as horror directing is concerned. He was responsible for an absolute surreal horror classic called Tetsuo. Now I haven't seen Tetsuo yet but I've heard a lot about it and how much this guy has actually created a name for himself and so for that reason because this is a nightmare on Elm Street sort of Japanese version where this killer is targeting people in their dreams I was a little bit disappointed by that. I was expecting something a little bit more from a guy from of, of such caliber. This is a movie that I thought, okay, well, if this was a very inexperienced director and using ideas that have come before it that are very successful, I could have excused that. But based on the fact that he is so well known and he's so great at actually creating horror films, I wanted a little bit more as far as the story is concerned. I just thought this is a deja vu and I've seen some of the sequences before. And so that was the biggest criticism I have of the film. And unfortunately, there are a few other little criticisms I have, but pushing that all aside, I still thought that this is a very impressive film is because this is a supernatural kind of horror movie. But on the other hand, Hand, you can use that supernatural horror element and it's a manifestation of psychological torment. This is a movie about suicidal tendencies, it's a movie about being a product of your upbringing, victim of your circumstances and how devastating that can be and how we've got demons inside our mind that are trying to tear us apart but you have to be very strong in order to try and survive these demons and so I thought the supernatural element of this movie was actually very smart is because it's used in a very realistic way and so you can't completely disconnect yourself from what's going on on stream because there's that underlying psychology that the movie has that makes you feel very uneasy. And so although you don't relate to these characters as much, I didn't really love these characters, I could still actually put myself into that situation it's because I've fought my demons and this is how hard it can be. And so that manifestation, I just think, creates that sense where you can't let go of the movie. You can't say to yourself, this is make-believe and that this doesn't exist. This is not the, the, the boogeyman under your bed. This is a movie where the boogeyman is actually under your bed and he's keeping a grip on you and he's not letting you take your eyes off the screen. And so there's a very strange absurdity absorbing quality that Shinya Sakamoto creates that I thought makes it a very captivating film. This is a very nightmarish film. Atmospherically, this is absolutely brilliant. This is a movie where you feel as though you've, you've got a fever and you're sick and then you have these horrible dreams. I think we've all had those horrible, horrible dreams and this is a movie where the dream is never ending. Is that It creates that atmosphere that I think really puts the hairs on the back of your neck. They really stand up and it sends a shiver down your spine and so I think this is a genuinely scary movie and you can tell why this director is so well known and is that the, why the director that has so much credit to his name is because he creates that sense of what you can't see and when that when that monster that you can't see starts creeping up on you all of a sudden you feel as though all the air is taken out of you and so as far as production is concerned, I thought it was a very smartly made film. This is a lower budget film, but the lower budget creates that sense that, okay, this is a very uncomfortable world that I'm in, and I really don't want anything to do with it. And so you've got all these other characters who have side stories, and the side stories were told very well because they don't go over the top and they don't really sidetrack the film from what it wants to be, but you get that sense, okay, this is basically the manifestation of you know um, suicidal tendencies and basically the strength you have to have in order to pull through that. And so it does have a double meaning, and I think that double meaning really saves this film from being uh, a mediocre sort of disposable horror film and so the acting the script was okay the acting was okay it was nothing brilliant once again there are moments to this film that I thought could have been a little bit better based on the fact that it's such a well-known director if this was a director that was unknown it was a debut sort of direction uh, directional debut then I would have said this is absolutely brilliant but based on the fact that this director is so well known I, I was wanting a little bit more I thought that some of the editing choices were a little bit off there's a lot of shaky cam and on one hand you can say that 
that the shaky cam creates that raw ferocity of the attack sequences, but there's other elements where you think, okay, well, just keep the camera still because I want to know what this evil presence looks like. There's glimpses of what it looks like, and it's very horrifying, but it's not as horrifying as it really could have been if you actually see everything that was going on. And I usually like uh, shaky cam. As I said, it creates that raw ferocity, but I thought in this instance, I didn't really like it. I just thought it was a little bit too much, and it does kind of, I guess I understand it does make you use your imagination a little bit more, but when you get glimpses of what's going on and it looks really cool, all of a sudden you just want the director just to stop for a second, just make it static so I can actually see it. So there's a lot of frustrating element to the film. I thought that some of the, as I said, some of the editing in the other sequences was a little bit off. I thought some of the acting was so-so. As I said, the script really needed to be a little bit better. And so the whole movie reeks of a movie of an unknown director, not a director who was so well known. And so that was the biggest disappointment is that it's not a bad movie by any means, but based on the fact that this is a guy that's supposed to be a legend as far as Japanese horror is concerned, I just wanted a lot more. And so it is a movie that I was very impressed with. I'm very happy that I actually saw, but I just couldn't help but feel that the create lack of creativity, as I said, this is a nightmare in Elm Street sort of Japanese version. I just, I, I thought that was a little bit, uh, uh, disappointing based on the fact that this director is so well known and he's created some of the most iconic Japanese horror films going around. So that is my review of Nightmare Detective. If you are a fan of really surreal and really, really nasty horror films, that will make you think, then I definitely think this is a, a movie I would highly recommend. But uh, if you're going into a movie, into this movie based on the director's name, then you could be feel, you could feel as though you're a little bit shortchanged. So overall, not a terrible film, but it's a movie that I couldn't help but feel it could have been a little bit better. And as a result of that, I'm going to give Nightmare Detective three stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later.